Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you late meet the Archie, the manager, speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. I guess who's coming down tonight? The man who made musical criticism a household word. <laughs> no, not President Truman. <laughs> There's no household word. <laughs> now, it's Deems Taylor. Deems, you know, like in uh, Deems Dem and Does. <laughs> you never heard of him. But Duffy's an institution. Deems is to American music what uh, or gratin is to cheese. <laughs> Look, Duffy, remember when we used to turn on the radio and uh, listen to them dull concerts, you know? Well, uh, he's the guy that used to liven them up with that dull dog. <laughs> That's the guy, yeah, from the Philharmonic. <laughs> it was his job to kind of blab about what was going on on the stage, sort of a combination of stool pigeon and peep and tom. <laughs> Huh? Oh, yes, uh, very distinguished, you know, uh, austere and dignified, aristocratic, bald-headed. <laughs> yeah, bald as a bat. <laughs> He's the only actor on television that can get away with throwing more flesh than Dagmar. <laughs> Well, he's coming down tonight to listen to an opera I have wrote for television. <laughs> Look, Duffy, a crude, vulgar sound like that don't make you no Deems Taylor. <laughs> uh, let me... So many people don't seem to like television. <laughs> well, let's see here. I better check this opera to see if I made any mistakes. Let's see. Act one. The curtain rises. That's your first mistake. <laughs> As the opera opens, the Duke has lost his entire fortune. As he comes home from his mother's funeral, he learns that his son has been run over by a beer truck. <laughs> so, racked with fever and malaria, he walks into his house, and he finds his wife in the arms of his best friend. So, turning to the audience, he stabs himself with his dagger as he sings, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning. <laughs> Well, that part's okay. I just wonder what I should call this opera. Uh, what, what would be a good title for an opera, Fats? Lohengrin? Yeah, that sounds a little corny. Eh? How about Pagliacci? No, it don't sound like it'd be a name that would catch on. How about Figaro? Don't be silly. That's a fertilizer. <laughs> well, we're getting close. What do you mean? Don't mind when I want lousy criticism, I'll ask Deems Taylor for it. Who's Deems Taylor? Who is Deems Taylor? <laughs> he only happens to be such a big name in the music world, he has his own key to the washroom at the Met. <laughs> That's one guy that knows everything there is to know about music. Yeah? Then why ain't he got his own band? Well, Pats, he's a critic. You know, the guy ain't got no talent himself. He's just an authority. <laughs> he tells other people what's wrong with them, you know. He, he can take any opera, say, say like Tannenbaum, you know. <laughs> he can tell you exactly how many notes there is on page 16. Suppose nobody asks him. <laughs> James is the type of man who will tell them anyway. Yep, he can even tell you anything you want to know about any composer, living or dead. Uh, oh, oh, hello, Finnegan. Hey, what's that you're writing? I'm knocking out an opera. Oh. Say, Art, could you use a good soprano? Who's the soprano? Me. Finnegan, in order to be a soprano, you've got to be a dame. Oh, then it wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> you were saying. What's the matter, thing? I've been studying. You want to hear me sing up the scale? Perish for bed. <laughs> oh, listen. No, 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 no. That was up the scale. <laughs> now, leave me hear you sing down the scale. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, his voice ain't bad, but he's got a horrible sense of direction. <laughs> well, Lodge, you can't have everything. Look, uh, who learned you to sing like that anyhow, Miss, Miss Duffy? No, why'd you miss Duffy? I learned it from listening to the birds. To the birds? Oh, exactly. Birds can sing better than anybody. Birds can sing. What are you talking? People can sing rings around birds anytime. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Take Lily Pond. She can hit an F above a high C. While balancing herself on a telephone wire? <laughs> Well... Or scratching herself behind the ear with her left leg. Okay, Finnegan, you made your point. Nothing, the hard way. And now, <laughs> leave me get back to my opera. Now, let me see. Uh... Oh, hello, Archie. Oh, hello, Miss Duffy. <clears throat> uh, don't bother me here for a minute. I'm busy now. As the curtain goes up, revealing the second cadenza, <laughs> our, uh, our hero went You know, Archie, everything you write always has a stamp of your personality on it. Yeah? Your work is always so... Uh, What's the word? Uh, individual? No. Unique? No. Imaginative? No. I'm afraid your vocabulary is lousy. That's the word, lousy. <laughs> now, if you ask me... I ain't asking you. What do women know about composing music anyhow? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Could I take part in this conversation? All right, Finnegan. What do you want to say? Oh, yeah. Miss Duffy, I, I defy you if you can name me one great woman composer who was a member of the female sex. A great woman composer? Uh, Joan Sebastian Bach. Well, her, yeah, but... But that's just one. <laughs> Let me see your name another. Uh, Paderewski. Paderewski was a guy. I am referring to his mother. She was a woman. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Who do you think beat him so he'd learn to play the piano? <laughs> oh, why do I waste me time? Archie, you seem to forget that I have a musical background. Only when you're standing in front of a jukebox. Uh, where did you get a musical background? From my grandfather. Your grandfather? Yeah. He was a musician. A musician? He was an organ grinder on a hurdy-gurdy. Some musician. Just a minute. In Daniel Webster's dictionary, a musician is defined as one who produces music, right? So? What do you think came out of that hurdy-gurdy? Chopped liver? <laughs> So your grandfather was another McRanenoff. <laughs> he was better. I'd like to see how good McRanenoff could play with a cop chasing him down the street. <laughs> or sitting on a telephone wire scratching his hair with his left leg. <laughs> so this is what you call a musical background, huh? How about Papa? What about him? He's always singing. Your old man always sings? Certainly. Every time he's in the bathtub. And he'd be much better off if he sang off now. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Have you ever heard him sing Sweet Adeline? Only once, a duet with a lamppost. <laughs> the lamppost sounded better. <laughs> Let's see. As the curtain goes up, the Duke has stabbed everybody on the stage. <laughs> so, not wishing to go out into the audience, he now stabs himself. <clears throat> As he gasps for breath, he pulls up his sleeve, and there, to his surprise, he finds a bite mark. It is a Salisbury strawberry. <laughs> he good cat, he yells. I am my own half-brother. Oh, Mr. Archie. Yeah, Fats. You want to taste this soup to see if it's all right? Okay. Tastes all right. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you one thing, Archie. What? You are sipping it in E-flat. <laughs> Dame's glad to see you back at the tavern again. How does the whole place look to you? Well, now I know how Orpheus felt in Hades. <laughs> but, 
this I ain't acquainted with. <laughs> Have you any other observations? Well, I must compliment you on one thing, Archie. What's that? The way you've arranged the customers in such neat piles. <laughs> I suppose you're used to the Metropolitan where they sleep sitting up. <laughs> but don't underestimate this place, teams. You know something? What? Irving Berlin himself sat at this very table, and he himself wrote that music right there on that tablecloth. Oh, that's what it is on that tablecloth. Let me yeah. see. Hmm, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Ouch! What happened? One of the half notes just jumped off the table and bit my hand. <laughs> Guess it was just professional jealousy. <laughs> well, this has all been very delightful. Now I think I'll go. Go? <clears throat> but you just got here. Can you think of a better time? <laughs> But we ain't even chit-chatted, Deems. Uh, tell me, what you been doing? You been working on FM? FM? Yeah, television. <laughs> <laughs> you should be great on it, huh? <laughs> well, to be frank, I, I am rather photogenic. <laughs> well, everybody's scared at first. <laughs> I understand that even when Milton Boyle started his hair, stood right on... You wouldn't have to worry about that. Archie, please, I'm... I'm a little sensitive about my departed pompadour. Oh, sorry. It's a rather sad chapter in my life. Okay, yeah, sensitive, man. Well, then, leave us not talk about it. Thank you. Not at all. Not at all. We'll talk about something else. Yes. Tell me, how'd you get so baldy, Dan? <laughs> Well, I, I gave my hair to my profession. You gave your hair to your profession? Yes, I was attending a rehearsal of an Indian opera. Naturally, I fell asleep. And uh, when I woke up, I was scalped. Well, you can't say the Indian wasn't thorough. <laughs> but I am being a thoughtless mine host. How about a bite to eat, Deems? Uh, Fats, take Mr. Taylor's order, huh? Uh, what have you, Fats? Well, would you like the 30-cent dinner or the 50-cent dinner? What's the difference? With the 50-cent dinner, you get a fly swatter. Uh, uh, give me the 50-cent uh, dinner. I need the exercise. Hey, uh, I right. uh, What is it, Finnegan? Who's the guy with the crew haircut? Wait. The crew bailed out. <laughs> Come in. This yeah, happens yeah. to be Deems Taylor, and he's very sensitive about it. His lack of no hair, see? So remember, don't mention hair when you're talking, Tom. Oh, not a word. I leave it to me. Well, Deems Taylor, as I live and breathe. Why, you do, don't you? <laughs> and, simul and simultaneously, too. <laughs> Hey, Arch, is it okay to talk to the guy? Yeah, only remember what I told you. I got you. Uh, 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 a nice day today, ain't it? Certainly is. My, but you're looking well. Why, thank you. Tell me, who does your scalp? <laughs> What's the matter? Did, did I let it slip? Talk to the guy about something else. Uh, talk about music. Oh, okay, music. Say, uh, to, uh, Mr. Taylor, why do I always get you confused with Spike Jones? Because you're a jerk. <laughs> oh, that's it. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Now, Archie, uh, you're, you're much too intolerant. Yeah. Finnegan has to be treated with understanding and patience. Uh, Finnegan, my friend... Yeah, uh, Spike Jones is an exponent of jazz and musical burlesque. Oh. While I, on the other hand, am uh, what they call a long hair. What'd you do, leave it home? <laughs> Archie, uh, what was that word you used a moment ago? Jake. Thank you. <laughs> Finnegan, you're a jake. Beat it. Oh, my James. <laughs> I say, Archie, this is a surprise. I knew you had a piano here, but I didn't know it was a baby grand. I beg your pardon. James, this is Miss Duffy. Oh. The piano's the one over there with the shapely legs. <laughs> so you're James Taylor, the well-known critic. That's right. 
So what have you got to be so critical about? Miss Tuffy, that's his job. The guy criticizes music. Do you hate music? No, I love it. Then why criticize it? Well, uh, Why don't you uh, criticize architecture? Really, I haven't the slightest interest in architecture. That's right. Throw Katrinka Yarbutz's mother out of work. Katrinka Yarbutz's mother? She's a steeplejack. <laughs> How did Katrinka Yarbutz get into this? Huh, I suppose she's not welcome just because she's from Lithuania. Miss Duffy, look, I'm only trying to tell you that my field is music. So what's wrong with the music from Lithuania? <laughs> Miss Duffy, please, uh, let's drop the subject and go on to something, shall I say, more important. Well, I, I know what you mean, but frankly, you're much too old for me. In fact, you remind me of my father. <laughs> well, that makes us even. You remind me of my father. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, you have just been exited. Uh, now, look, Deems, I got a little surprise for you. Another? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I guess a lot of morons uh, come to you with operas they have written. Huh? Oh, that's right. Where's, where's yours? <laughs> right here. Uh, and it's the first opera ever wrote for television. It's years ahead of its time. I can wait. <laughs> But I can't, so uh, why don't you take it over in the corner and read it, you know, just quiet like. Mm. Couldn't I scream just once? <laughs> well, if the mood seizes you. Mm. Let me look at this. Uh, you say you wrote this opera for television? Mm hmm. What are you trying to do? Bring back radio? <laughs> Archie? Yeah, Deems. It says here on the opera, written by Archini. Is that you? Of course. <laughs> I figured Archie was too plain for opera, so I decided to uh, adopt a musical name, you know, a metronome. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, Deems, uh, did you look over the opera? Yes. What do you think of it? Well, uh, considering the fact that you never went to school, <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> just looking at the raw music. It'll sound better when you hear yourself singing it. I would rather drop dead. <laughs> Not until the second act. <laughs> well, what do you say? Will you sing it, yes or no? No. No, huh? Deans, I got 23 more bald-headed jokes. You have? Yeah. <clears throat> Glad to have you in the cast. Now, here, Finnegan, Miss Duffy, here's your parts. Uh, Fats, you're the orchestra. Uh, overture, please. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gents, I am honored to present a new opera wrote by me esteemed self. This opera tells the story of an ancient and royal Italian family named the Pastos. And their enemies, the Antipastos. <laughs> Prince Cacciatore Pasto will be sung by Mr. Deems Taylor, our eminent contemporary and mezzo barracuda. <laughs> and a part of his sweetheart, Princess Vermicelli Antipasto, will be sung by the well known lyric falsetto uh, and popular cashier and girl after men about town, Miss Duffy. the house lights dim and a curtain rises on the first libretto. Oh, Cacciatore, how can I live without you? Oh, Vermicelli, I'm so mad about you. <laughs> oh, Moon. Oh, Joan. He's good, Boy, is this bad. <laughs> Please, Mr. Taylor. Tonight, you are not a critic. You are merely a broken-down opera singer. Oh, I'm sorry. Granted. <laughs> oh, what a tragedy. This you are telling me. Here shall we laugh or cry. You laugh, and I will cry. Ha, 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 ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, uh, Archie, uh, 
chain. Yeah. And this music. Uh, yes. It's uh, La Donna Immobile. Thanks, and it gets even better. <laughs> Continue, orchestra. Oh, princess. Oh, princess. A man cometh through the forest. It's my trusty servant, an old family container. <laughs> uh, oh, princess, princess, wither art thou? I wither here. <laughs> wither art thou? What hides you hence? I come tied inside berries. Uh, tied inside terries. I get the... Uh, uh, you know, I got news for you. <laughs> The uh, your old man, the Baron Gorgonzola and the Postle, approaches forthwith. He has found out that you are in love with the son of a mortal enemy. Oh, quickly, Cacciatore, we must flee. Flee, 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 It is too late to flee, my love. Here's your father now. Well, where is our old man? Penny, and you're the father, too. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, hello, my daughter. What are you doing with this son of the man I hate? Prince Cacciatore, wither is your father. I wither right here, Antipasto. Wouldst make order of it? Now, please, no scenes, Pop. Pasto, I hate you. And I hate you. Oh, I hate you. And I hate you. I hate you more than you hate me. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. We hate each other with a love that's Antipasto. Yes, Pasto. <laughs> Didst thou bring thou swords? I didst. Wouldst fight? Wouldst. Then, sir, on guard. Oh! Stop them, Cacciatore, before they sunder each other from limb to limb. I cannot bear Michelli, lest they will sunder me. Then I will stop them, though it cost me my blood life. Gazooks! The princess has run betwixt him. She has just been stabbed on stage left. <laughs> Okay, Miss Duffy, uh, there's your cue. Drop dead. Oh. <sighs> Tis the death rattle. <laughs> I fear I have stabbed your daughter to the quick. Uh, no, Pasto. Thee have stabbed thine own daughter. What, Kaveri? Yes. What I allow doest thou sayest, thou man? <laughs> Tis the truth I speak, Pasto. I am the old nurse. And when the prince and princess were mere babes in arms, I got them all mixed up one day. Thou mixest them up? Yeah, I mixed them up. I got them all mixed up. I couldn't tell them apart. I got them all mixed up. I mixed them up. They mixed us up. <laughs> then, then, Vermicelli, I am you. Yes, Cacciatore, and I am you. And he is she. And she is he. M.T. for two and Stop it. Don't massacrate this noble music. Now, go ahead, Miss Duffy. Will you please resume dying? Oh, Cacciatore, I am dying. My tide <coughs> is ebbing fast away. Oh, Princess Perfavone, do not leave me. I'm sorry, my prince, but the time has come when I must Tell us why. For Gabriel blows his horn at I. Please, Please don't, don't die. die. Oh, princess, don't leave me like this. Oh, no, you can't just die and leave the prince like this. I've got to go. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, I must go. Oh, oh no, no, no. Yes, I must go. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, I must go. Oh, no, no, no. There she is not the only one. There goes Deems. He's had all he can stand, it seems. Come back, Deems. No, Archie, I must leave me thinks. But first, I'd like to say that this here opera... Deems! <laughs> 